Hey everybody, this is Doug Kenny from Stories from Motorsports, and today we have Sam Fellows with us. Hey, how you doing? Good, how you doing, Doug? Thanks for having me. No problem. We're glad to have you on. Awesome. Happy to be here. Yeah, so where are you originally from? I am I was born in Toronto. I grew up in a suburb of Toronto, but now I'm I'm back living in, in the Toronto city limits. So I call Toronto my my home. Um, it's where I was born and that's where I'm currently living right now. So, uh, yeah, love, love, love the city and, uh, it's a beautiful day today for October in Canada. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Good to hear. So, uh, what made you get into racing? Um, got into it through my, through my family for sure. My dad, um, raced, uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, mostly when I was a little kid, he was in the Trans Am series. Um, and then he moved over to, um, I guess in 96 or so he got involved with, uh, the, the Chevrolet, uh, brand and he's been with them ever, ever since. So they, they ended the Trans Am, uh, program in, in 96 with my dad and they, you know, kept him on as a driver. He got into, you know, being a road course ringer and, and, but the key thing with, with Chevrolet was, was getting Corvette back to, uh, the 24 hours of Le Mans. And, and so that was, you know, the start of Corvette racing and, you know, 90, I think they tested all through 98, 99, and then they raced a bit in 99 and then 2000. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, Corvette racing has had uh, a pretty storied history ever since. So it's, it's cool that he was there, you know, to begin that whole program. And that's kind of, you know, where I, as a kid grew up was under that tent specifically with, um, you know, Gary and Robin Pratt and, and, uh, you know, the, the Millers and, you know, Doug, uh, or sorry, Dan Banks and all the, all the people who were involved there, all the, all the drivers and team people were kind of like my aunts and uncles. So it was a really cool place to grow up as a kid. And I think kind of naturally, you know, got into it like from, from there and wanted to be involved and wanting to race myself. So, Kind of osmosis, I guess. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What was experiencing Victory Lane like when your dad won all those Bush races in NASCAR at the Glen? Yeah, pretty cool. I, I have uh, my bet. My you know best memory is from two thousand and eight when he won the. It was nationwide then, but today Xfinity race at um, uh, Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. And, um, you know, that, that wasn't too long ago. <laughs> uh, it seems like that wasn't too long ago. And then you look at the date and it's like, wow, it's really gone. Time's really gone by. But, um, you know, I was, a, you know, still a, still a teenager. And, and I remember that really well. And, um, but yeah, Watkins Glen obviously was a really good memory for us. That was, you know, a lot of years there where dad was super competitive, usually with, with the Nemco team in, in Bush and, uh, crash and truck and, and then DEI with, uh, uh, in the cup series and a bunch of team. you got to race for a bunch of cool teams and, uh, you know, Cal Wells, uh, also the, um, the uh, hall of fame racing team. So he, he, we, we got to meet some really cool people and, and hang out in some really cool places. And for sure, I mean, when he won there, um, you know, that's, that was kind of the, his, our little mini Super Bowl, I think, of the year as a, for the year as a family was getting to go to Watkins Glen for the, the cup weekend. So that was a really big part of our schedule. Yeah. Do you remember what team he raced for when he first made his start in the cup series, the 68 team? Was it, was it Kanaska or was it TriStar or what was it again, if you can remember? Kanaska sounds right. I, I really vaguely remember that. I was pretty pretty young at that point. That would have been probably 97 or 98, I think. So uh, I would have only been four or five years old then. But I remember, I remember uh, my probably the, be the best memories I have were, were the DEI years. Um, and then uh, being a part of um, JR Motorsports on the Xfinity side um, through till, you know, 2011 or 12, I think was the last year he, he ran with them and Road America, Mid Ohio, um, Montreal, Watkins Glen, all those races. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was super cool. It was a, it was an awesome, awesome time and, uh, memories that I'll never forget. I miss those days. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. NASCAR is a lot of fun, you know? 
Yeah, for sure. It's, it's a lot different than sports car racing. Um, just the whole general vibe of the, the way the garage works and the way you're kind of treated as a driver. And it's, it's, you know, in sports car racing, there's a lot of drivers cause you have, you know, two, at least two or three drivers per car for the, the long races. So, um, sometimes I think things can get a little, you know, lost in the sauce maybe when it comes to sports car racing. And nowadays there's, you know, there's a lot of, there's a try to do a lot for the customer side to make it, um, you know, viable, you know, financially with, you know, a lot of different, um, trophies and classes and, and, you know, it's, it's expensive, but NASCAR is very, has a real old school vibe to it. And, you know, as a driver, you're kind of treated you know, super well. And we were always treated really, really well in the NASCAR paddock. And it was cool to, you know, hang out in the, in the trailer area, which was just for the drivers and, you know, hang out with some of the other drivers, families and their kids and get to meet people. And it was a real community type vibe. And I think just the logistics maybe of sports car racing kind of uh, make it a little harder, harder to do that. So I think NASCAR is, is, you know, you're, you're part of this big community, this big traveling circus basically. And they race so many weekends a year that you're, you're there kind of constantly at the track. And, and that really creates a great community, I think. So. Yeah, for sure. Do you remember anything from the frontier at the Glen in 99 when your dad finished second to Jeff Gordon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember I remember those years like feeling feeling just like frustrated for my dad cuz he had a car several times I think, you know, that he should have won a cup race and and finishing second to to Jeff Gordon and then a couple years later second to Tony Stewart and um, just always seemed like it, it, he always had, he always raced really well and he always had a good car around then, but it just never, you know, in hockey, they say you just didn't get the bounces, you know, it's just things didn't fall your way. So, uh, I remember that year specifically, I think I, there was a late restart, but I think, you know, they didn't take tires at one point because they had to start from the back. And for whatever reason, I think maybe being a road course guy and, you know, qualifying maybe was rained out or something like that. It was he was always starting from the back and having to f slice his way through the field, and which was awesome. But you know, right at the end of that race, I think specifically, I just don't think he had enough tire left to catch to catch Jeff uh, to really give him a, a, a shot. And obviously, you know, Jeff and Tony specifically, I think those two guys and Dale Jr. was really good. But th that was, I think, the beginning of of the Cup guys really starting to hone the the road course craft. And and now we see it today, you know. Larson and Chase and um, you know a lot of these guys are really really fast and really good on the road course and it's it's hard for a ringer like to come in if, if there was ever going to be a time I think it was this year at Chicago where it's just it's so specific the street racing stuff and and to know exactly how to do it and you know for Shane Van Ginsburg and it felt like you know from what what my dad never had was a, a perfect race where really the only two guys I think that that had a chance to race with Shane was uh, um, uh, C Bell and and um, Reddick and they both kind of made mistakes that put them out of being able to battle at the end there and and my dad he was happy for him obviously road course ringers we they try to stay we try to stay together but at the same time I saw a little bit of like in his eyes like damn like I wish I wish I had a race where it kind of played out like like it played out perfectly for Shane and he played it perfect and he was he was perfect you know with with everything he did and and you just you just need everything to come together in in one of those races to win and it's I know my, that's what haunts my dad at night is he never got that that cup win but I mean finishing second to those guys Tony and Jeff I mean that's that's pretty great accomplishment so he's he should be proud of himself yeah I know what you mean not everyone yeah. can say they've raced against those guys that's right yeah do you recall what your dad said after finishing second to Jeff, like the first thing he said to you or? I don't remember specifically what was said. It's funny because when, you know, in, in my own racing, you know, you're, you have moments, you know, racing is such a, an up, up and down sport and the highs are really high and the lows are very low, but you know, it's, you know, it's funny. And as well, like you saw at the, the Formula One race this past weekend, you know, guys finishing second and third and being so disappointed. And, you know, there's guys throughout the field, especially in NASCAR back then, there was, 
you know, sometimes 43, you know, 40 cars in the back. Um, so, you know, it's like, you know, you could have been 40, you could have been 40, 30, you could have been dead last, but you're second and you're still disappointed. And, but that's just part of being a competitor, I think, and, and always wanting to, to be the one on top. So I don't remember anything specific. He said, I just remember, I remember, you know, as the years have gone by and we kind of talk more about it, I think specifically the race where he felt like he should have had it one was, I believe Sonoma in the, I think it was the Pennzoil car. Um, yeah. He didn't finish second, but he led most of that race, and they just made a, a pit, stra- uh, pit strategy error at the end of the race that that they basically pit right as a as a yellow came out. It was like the worst possible um, thing to happen, and I think that's the one where he says he should he should have won that one, and uh, just because the car was so good and they were so dominant all day, and it wasn't a race where he had to come to the back. I think he qualified within the top five, so. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's my, you know, coach, my spotter, he's my, uh, my biggest fan and he's, he's helped me everywhere, everything in my career so far with, um, you know, the whole technique of driving, the whole mentality of it. And, uh, he's, he's the best coach I think you can have <laughs> in, in, the, in your, in your corner. So, um, I'm super happy, you know, and we, we talk about racing all the time, you know, it's his passion, it's our f- whole family's passion. So. My brother, my brother is a hockey player, or he was a hockey player, but he's obsessed with NASCAR too. So we're we're all all a racing family for sure. Yeah, for sure. I remember also. You might remember this vaguely, but he had a similar race to two thousand three at Sonoma in two thousand one with the eighty with the eighty seven car, and pretty okay. much the same thing happened. But I don't think the team was that confident that they would have won, even if they tried, from what I remember, because they I think they uh, made like a mistake in the middle of the race that meant that Jeff Gordon got the lead and all that. Do you remember that? I don't remember that one specifically. No, I I, I remember more the the, the DEI uh, in the one car with I think that was I think that was 2003 three or something like that. Yeah. So that sounds about right. Do you remember what he said afterwards after that race or no? I don't remember specifically things being said. I think, you know, he, he's, he's always, uh, he's always been a guy who has been really good at setting up a car and he's always prided himself on, on, uh, on the, that kind of intangible as a driver where you're able to feel, you know, literally in your, in your butt and your hands, you know, what the car needs. And he's a really good, uh, test driver, um, as well. And that's why he's, 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 you know, through the Corvette years, he was so instrumental, I think getting that car to where it needed to be. And usually I think I remember those races, you know, the first thing he comes out and says is, is just speaking to the crew or the mechanic or the crew chiefs about specifically, you know, what the car needed more. And he's just always kind of thinking, you know, in the, still in the driver mentality race mode of, you know, if we had made this change or if we had, you know, this shock set up or, you know, blah, blah. And so he's very, uh, he's very methodical like that. I, I, I got him to drive my car last year and the input he had was super interesting. Just having somebody who has the vocabulary, I think that he does. Um, and the experience to be able to sit in my car and basically explain all the things that I'm feeling that I didn't, maybe I can't explain as well yet um, in my, you know, in my, at my level of say understanding of, of the setup or of the car. So um, really cool that he did that. And uh, um, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll get him in a, in a Pinty's car one of these days. And uh, you know, we've got our own team now. We just are a one car team, but you know, you never know, maybe he'll, Maybe we'll rent another car and he'll come race race with me sometime. So that'd be really cool.